values are being upheld. And I know a lot of times we get discouraged. The shaitan is always in the mix. Shaitan is doing his job of creating chaos and confusion, of convincing us that we don't have and we can't do. Convincing you that you can't do, you can't achieve. You don't have what it takes. For some of us, Shaitan has convinced us that we're not good enough. And that's a reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna shaytana lakum aduun fattakhidhuhu aduwa very verily. Shaitan is an enemy to you. So take him as your enemy. And shaitan comes in many shapes and many forms. Shaitan can come in a form and shape of piety, good advice. He can come in the form and the shape of your brother, wanting what is good for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with Islam, just the greatest gift to humanity. He has given you what you need to free yourself from bondage. And he didn't guide you to Islam in order for you to continue to be subservient to someone else. So beware of shaitan. And beware of his treachery. I wanted to speak about our, our elders. And the fact that they did what they were supposed to do. They set things in place. They put the wheels in motion for us to be beneficiaries of their sacrifice and their vision. Some of whom I see in this room today. <coughs> Our elders who practiced Islam in a time when there was only one masjid in Philadelphia. They didn't have the resources that we have today. They didn't have the numbers that we have today that we most often brag about. We love to look at how many Muslims are here and there. My fear is that all that they have sacrificed will one, go unnoticed, and two, be forgotten. And that can easily happen. Younger generations of brothers and sisters who have come into this deen most aren't familiar with the history of Islam. I'm speaking specifically about Islam in Philadelphia. They're not familiar with the history of Islam in Philadelphia and what that means to you as a Muslim. How you view yourself. How you feel about your Islam and what you know. What you believe. So consequently when someone comes with what we consistently hear, this new information from overseas, or we're not doing, we don't know, 
Sunni Islam has been practiced in Philadelphia since the 1940s. Some say since the 1930s. So when you don't know who you are, you don't know what your history is, it's easy for someone to come in and tell you that you don't know anything. That you don't know what you're doing. Or that you don't come from anything and that your voice doesn't matter. We have a history, brothers and sisters, and our history is rich. Our roots go way back. But it's on us to embrace that. It's on us to know and it's on us to understand and it's on us to inform. And like I said, the previous generations did what they were supposed to do. This masjid is, is here by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a result of the sacrifice of past generations. The school next door is here by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the sacrifice of previous generations. And the many people who have left this masjid, left the Quba Institute by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a result of the sacrifice of previous generations. And I stand here before you today by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a result of the sacrifice of previous generations. In order for our institutions to continue to be a presence for future generations, insha'Allah, a positive presence for future generations. It takes commitment and it takes work. And my comments are not directed to my brothers and sisters who have paid their dues. My comments are not directed to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for everything that you've done. And if we have not said it publicly, we appreciate what you have done for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all handsomely for your sacrifice, for standing for truth, honor, and dignity. For standing for Islam. And you have done what you were supposed to do. The time is now for our younger brothers to step forward, assume some of the responsibility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, and this is in a sequence of verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking of the children of Israel. <coughs> and their rejection of faith, he says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم تلك أمة قد خلت لها ما كسبت ولكم ما كسبتم ولا تسألون عما كانوا يعملون He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that is a generation that has passed. They did what they did. They earned what they earned. And you will do what you do. And you will earn what you earn. And you will not be asked about what they did. Or what they did not do. Or what you think they didn't do for you. Or what you think or may think they have not set up for you. This is your time. My comments are now directed to the brothers. If you're over 25 and under 45, this is your time. This is your time. This is your opportunity to do something meaningful. This is your opportunity to step forward. This is your opportunity to contribute in a meaningful way.
This is an opportunity for your voice to be heard. And I keep going back to your voice being heard because this is a consistent theme that we hear. That somehow others' voices are over, is over drowning out our voice. That others are speaking on our behalf. And we get angry and we're upset and we want to say things about people and this is wrong and we want to cry foul. This is mostly the younger people. Recognize and realize that you have a responsibility. You have a communal responsibility. If you are one of those people who's constantly crying foul about some fetwa that you didn't agree with, if you're constantly crying foul about someone who made an ill-advised statement regarding Islam that you may find objectionable or not to your liking, that person doesn't speak for me. Well, if that person doesn't speak for you and that is not your voice, then put yourself in a position to be heard. And putting yourself in a position to be heard entails you doing some work. Not being on the sideline criticizing. Or posting your displeasure on Facebook. Doing meaningful work and putting yourself in a position entails you getting involved. تلك أمة قد خلت لها ما كسبت ولكم ما كسبتوا. That generation, previous generations who have set up things for us, they're gone. They're either gone or their 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 prime has passed. They did the best that they could. And I said this before in the past and I will continue saying this and this is my challenge <coughs> to my younger brothers and sisters. This is a challenge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with a lot of talent. A lot of talented young people with so much to offer. What is Islam going to get from you? What is your contribution going to be? Let not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with, all that He has blessed your intellect, your energy, your ideas, your vision, your abilities. Let not all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with be to the benefit of the highest bidder. Other religious minorities in this country have thrived. They've made progress, and they've thrived and they've made progress because committed people did work. People with skills did work. They contributed. We need you. Your communities need you. Whether you feel that you have something to offer or not, you are valuable. You are an asset. You are an asset to the Islamic community. <coughs> what the Islamic community needs from you is your youth, your energy, your best. 
The Islamic community doesn't need you after you retire, you're broken down and the world has sucked the life out of you. Then you come to the Muslim community and you want to give the community crumbs. Fi sabilillah. You give your best sadaqah, not your worst. You give your best, not your worst. And this is not an admonishment. I'm calling you. I'm encouraging you, my younger brothers and sisters. When I look at, and I hate naming names on the member, but Sheikh Ali Subhan just traveled here to Philadelphia from Somerdale, New Jersey. And he comes from time to time to attend Jumu'ah here. And he is one of our original members here at the International Muslim Brotherhood, or Masjid Quba. And I know his sacrifice. I've seen his history. I've seen what he has done. I've lived part of his history. Most of you don't know that when I was overseas in Medina, Sheikh Ali was overseas in Medina with me. He used to live downstairs uh, below us. And he struggled to learn so that he can come back and contribute as a young man. When we have our classes, we're not looking for the over 50s to come and fill up the classes. While the under 50s are, are on Sundays, I love football too. But come on, give me a break. Our classes are filled with people who are 50 and older. And this is not me putting down my brothers who are 50 and sisters who are over 50. And I'm not, I'm not standing before you calling you old or telling you that you're tired. That's not what I'm saying. But there has to be clear succession. It can't be that past generations gave full effort and current generations are the, we're the slouchers. We're the half-doers. We're the ones that, are, that dropped the ball. We fumbled it, and the, the generation behind us, they're looking at us like, you know, what are we supposed to do? And I'm going to tell you this with all sincerity, brothers and sisters. Whether we realize it or not, and again, the pressure is on us. It's on all of us. We're in danger of losing all of our institutions. That's a reality. That's a fact. And in order for our institutions to survive, we have to ensure their survival and their continuation. That's on us. That's not on somebody else. We can't pass, we can't kick that bucket down the line. We can't do that. We can't continue looking at other, looking for other people for, to throw us a, a rescue line. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has started out by saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us. He's blessed all of us in ways we can't even imagine. He's given us things we, we, we don't even recognize and realize, subhanAllah. The amount that the intangibles that the Muslim community has, subhanAllah, is all there for us. We don't have to look far. It's all there for us. And as I've, I, I've said months ago, we have to figure this thing out. And we're smart enough to figure this thing out. We're smart enough to bring this thing together. And my younger brothers, and a lot of you know me, I'm going to continue to call you out. I'm going to call you out. Those of you who know the younger brothers that know me and have been knowing me for a long time. And I'm not saying this bragging. I've had this conversation with you several times before. Those of you whom I taught when you were like eight or nine, I was 20 years old. I was 20 years old teaching you Quran. 
hopefully impacting your life in a, a good and positive way. When I look at and I see the ni'mah that's around me and I say subhanallah one day inshallah one day we are going to one day inshallah we're going to put this thing together we're going to put this puzzle together one day we're going to figure it out and one day we're going to be a force to be reckoned with One day, insha'Allah. I know that our predecessors made plenty of du'a. They prayed for us. Du'as that we never heard. Du'as that We don't realize that we're made for us. But wallahi, the evidence, brothers and sisters, is around you. The evidence is around you. All you, got, all you have to do is look around. And all you see is na'mah. And I want you to consciously put out of your mind all the nonsense and negativity and craziness. Because I know a lot of times that stuff can cloud judgment. When you see enough nonsense, craziness, and negativity, it impacts your judgment. So you're looking at only the bad, and you don't see the good. Practice on seeing the good. Practice on seeing the good that's there. The Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, this hadith is in reference to him ﷺ, and he said, Ana da'watu Abi Ibrahim. I am the, the answer to the prayer of my father, Ibrahim, and the glad tidings of my brother, Isa. Wa bushra akhi Isa. <coughs> In the same way the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam when you read the Quran and this, this is a reference, direct reference to a dua that is in the Quran. You read the Quran you realize and recognize that Ibrahim alayhi salam made several dua. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an answer to one of his duas. You look around, you realize that your own, your predecessors made du'a and that all of us present here are an answer, inshallah, to that du'a. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved us from the madness of jahiliyyah and brought us into Islam and now we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to pull the next generation up. Pull them forward. Leave them with something they can work with. Because we're not going to be here for long. We're about to turn the page on another year. Those of us who say they don't recognize the Gregorian calendar, New Year's is on Wednesday. And I know a lot of us, and sometimes we can't hide stuff, we'll, we'll be making resolutions. And if that's your thing, mashallah, I mean, it's a good thing. But I mean, if it's about, you know, self-improvement, it's all good. Alhamdulillah. And if that's your thing, make sure that the top of your list, the top of your list, that you're, you're going to do something meaningful. Whatever that is. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you you have to do. 
What I'm telling you is, um, inshallah, I'm speaking to your conscience. You need to do it. We all need to do it. I'm going to leave you with this. And this is one of, <clears throat> I, I, I love this quote. Even though this quote was by a tyrant, I love the quote. And this quote is by Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al thaqafi Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf was, by many accounts, a vicious man. By some accounts, the Hajjaj ibn Yusuf was a pious man, although he did some interesting things on behalf of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. The Hajjaj ibn Yusuf once said, "Laysa al-fata, I'm sorry, inna al-fata man qala ha ana za, laysa al-fata man qala kana abi." Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf said, and this was in response to two young men who had gotten into trouble, and they cleverly talked their way out of trouble. So Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf said in response to that, the measure of a man is not, is one who says that I'm here. By saying I'm here, meaning that they do. Their presence, they're forced to be reckoned with. Not someone who's constantly referencing someone else. Talking, reminiscing about, you know, my, my daddy did and, you know, my old head did. That's dead, man. What are you going to do? Nobody, nobody wants to hear that. What, what are you going to do? And again, I'm talking to my young people, brothers and sisters. What are you going to do? So, inshallah, on Wednesday, and I, I'm, I'm suspecting that I will be uh, astaghfirullah on many circles. Can't believe the imam referenced uh, New Year's resolution. However, we know what we do. Okay, so let's, let's be real. On Wednesday, be prepared to answer that question. Be prepared. You're not answering the question for me. You're answering that question for yourself. What am I going to do? What am, what am I going to do? What am I, what am I about? Because honestly, when I in, encounter, and I can say this, comfortably about my young brothers but I don't know my young sisters but my young brothers I don't know what you're about I can say that when I say I don't know what you're about I'm not questioning your Islam let's not get it twisted I'm not questioning your Islam I'm not critiquing you like that but I don't know what you're about I mean you got to stand for something what is it that you stand for what is it that your what motivates you That's a question you have to answer. And if you feel that you fit in somewhere and all that needs to be done for Ummah Muhammad, all that needs to be done for Ummah Muhammad, you feel you, feel you have a place? Jump in. Don't tip it to win. Don't play with it. Don't, don't tease. Jump in. Do it. Do it. Don't talk about it. Do it. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on this blessed day of Jumu'ah that he blesses us with hidayah. <laughs> that he blesses us with hidayah. Amen. That he blesses us <coughs> with insight insha'Allah I pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he preserve and forgive our elders because he subhanahu wa ta'ala 
knows that they did the best that they could with what they were given. I pray to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he blesses us all and that he forgives us all. I pray to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he forgive us all for our shortcomings, that he increase us in faith, that he accept our tawbah on this blessed day. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات من كل من كل ذنب واستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبيه الكريم وبعد إن closing brothers and sisters. As I always do, when I give the khutbah, I am calling myself first, and I am calling you specifically on a weekend like this weekend. Today, before you leave the masjid, you need to figure out how to do something good for someone else. Whatever it is, how small it may be, have your plan. Additionally, when you leave here today, inshallah, and you look forward to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planned for you this weekend, whatever plans you have in place for yourself, remember to do something for someone. And when you, do, when you do for others, you're doing for yourself. Don't let shaitan distract you. Don't let shaitan discourage you from doing good. Because as we well know, shaitan has ways of discouraging you from doing good. Don't let shaitan discourage you from doing good. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accept from us all. I pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accept from us all. I pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accept from us all. I pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he forgive us all. I pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he increase us all. I pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make our ending a good one. That he make our standing a good one. And that he grant us the highest levels of paradise. I pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make our standing a one that is easy. I pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make our standing before him subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment one that is easy. I pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he forgive us, that he increase us, and that he re- re- uh, grant us the highest reward of al-jannah. Ala wa sallu ala sayyidu mursaleen wa imam al-muttaqeen. Qad amarakum Allah bi dhalika fi kitab al-aziz fa qala jalla min qail. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما ويقولوا عليه أفضل الصلاة والتسليم من صلى عليه مرة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى منها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيبكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزركم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واعطين الصلاة فإن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر Straighten the ranks, complete the first line first, and shot the law, close the gaps. Okay, this line isn't straight. So I can move back or move forward. <coughs> Oh.
الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاتا ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والعاديات ضبحا فالموريات قرحا فالمغيرات صبحا فأثرن به نقعا فوسقن به جمعا إن الإنسان لربه لتنور وإنه على ذلك لشديد وإنه لحب الخير لشديد أفلا يعلم إذا بعثر ما في القرور وحصل ما في الصدور إن ربهم بهم يومئذ لخبير الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 